As much as we love Dora the dog, <laughs> she's 15 years old and we can't really train her to be the farm dog right now. Also, she's like 90% deaf at this <laughs> point, so I don't think she'd be able to hear any threats. Her eyes still work though. I don't really think Dora has the ability to kill a coyote anymore. No, she, she doesn't. all day long. All the dogs we've ever owned have been just house dogs. But we've had Dora and Minnie that basically spend their day inside the house sleeping all day. And as you guys know, we've had our coyote problem. And so it's time for us to get a real farm dog. Everybody get their head in. Okay. <laughs> this hurts. Okay, My little legs. Bit, little bit further okay, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. We got a puppy, but we don't have it yet. We put a deposit down, so we're waiting on that puppy to arrive. We picked the perfect breed. You guys will have to guess Perfect. What it is. We got lots and lots of advice and recommendations, and we talked to tons of different breeders. And um, so, the dog we're gonna get, we're not gonna tell you guys just yet. We are going to keep it a secret. It's gonna come about mid-December, so about a month, and we're gonna give you guys a clue in each video, so. Ethan, what's the first clue? I didn't know we were doing clues. But... <laughs> the clue is she's in a movie. <laughs> That's every dog, but okay. she's in a really well... good family movie. Okay, so that's the that's the first uh, clue for ya. I look so short when I'm doing this. <laughs> we'll still have Dora and Minnie. They'll be all, our little house guardian dogs, but for the farm guardian, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna show you. It'll be fun. No, I don't know how to end it. Uh, We're gonna show you. It'll be fun. <laughs> just helping, just helping just fun. Helping, helping fun. just. <laughs> We're excited. Oh, wow. That's how they do it, they just, go on. Oh. oh! Well, looks like these babies figured out how to jump out of their cage. They go up on the wall, wow. Hopefully that'll make it so that they can't get out. Until they're fully weaned, we share the milk with the goats, which means that Fern gets a break from them at night, they get locked up in this cage, and then in the morning we'll milk her out before we let them have access to her milk all day. They're cheating the system right now though, so hopefully this will keep them away from her. They have some hay, some water, a little bit of grain, they're fine, but at any chance that they get, they're gonna wanna get to Fern and drink from her. Fern is definitely starting to get a little tired of feeding these little babies. She's been very impatient, starting to kick them off a little bit. But that's pretty normal of goats. When they get this age, they're, they don't want to be patient with their babies anymore. They want them to eat and be done. <laughs> Ooh. Do it. Take a leap of faith. Whoa! <laughs> oh, oh, that one just plunked into two white ones. Guys, the baby goats are getting so cute, and it's so hard to decide if we should keep one of them. So remember guys, my ultimate goal is to improve the herd and produce mini milkers that have the best quality milking lines possible. So Fern's the mom of these babies, and it's interesting because she's the daughter of Tilly. And remember, Tilly comes from good milking lines. The only downside with her line is that they tend to be late bloomers. They seem to have their peak milking at about five to six years old. And remember, Tilly's only four. 
So when we bred Tilly with Floki, we got little Fern, and now we bred Fern with Iverson. And Iverson has some good lines as well. So now the decision is, do we keep the pairing of Fern and Iverson and go with that line, or do we wait? So far, both of these babies look really great as far as their structure goes, so there's not really any problems there. The only downside is we already have a bunch out of Tilly. We have, we have Tilly, we have Fern, we have Tatum. So do I wanna keep going with that line, or do I pause? possibly want to look at maybe some outside lines that we could bring in. We really only have the two lines, which is the Willow line and the Tilly line. As far as the registered Nigerian dwarf goats go, we definitely have Stella here, but she's just kind of a, an extra bonus to have on the farm. So put your opinions in the comments if we should continue with this line and keep trying to improve it, or if we should maybe veer in another direction. Let me know what you think. So Liddy, do you think we should keep either of these babies? <laughs> I don't know, you keep going back and forth, so I'm not, I, I would, if we were gonna keep one, it would be Fiona, but I'm not so sure on these two. Yeah, I don't know either. I need just like a couple more weeks to yeah. decide. So that they can grow out of their biting and kind of get more, I don't know. It'll be fun when we put them back with the herd. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they can play with the other goats and we can kind of see how they fit in. Yeah. Now that the weather is nice, I can finally do something about the feeder fiasco. Fern, you piece of garbage. You're never not going to be in this feeder, I swear. Winnie the poop. Goats are always doing something they're not supposed to in the feeder. They are standing straight up in the feeder. They are laying down sideways in the feeder. They are sticking their butt up to the feeder and pooping in the feeder. I'm an engineer, and so I really like to have things efficient. So nothing's wasted, nothing's broken, no food is just paid for and then thrown all over the place and never eaten. So I'm gonna make this efficient and work. Well, looky there. It works for old goats. It works for short goats. It works for tall goats. It works for regular goats. Look at this, it's working. They're all able to eat. They can't stand in it and lay in it. They can't throw it all on the ground because if it comes out, it lands in my little catch basin down here. This is my bar that I invented so that they won't poop in it. They won't put their back end up here to scratch their back end. They won't poop in here because this bar keeps their butt far enough away. Super long so all the goats can eat at the same time and no one will fight. <laughs> As I say that, Luna tries to knock someone away. Oh, I don't know about putting your feet up there. That's kind of against the rules. No. Putting your feet up there. I like it, it looks really good. Yeah, it's nice and neat. Yeah, it's perfect. It's either a good feeder or a very comfortable potty chair, and they'll sit right here and try and poop in it. <laughs> no, I think they'll do good. Crowded on one side, even though. Even though they have all this space. Maybe you should extend it all the way to there. No, because then they can jump over the fence, right? At least Hermione doesn't like it. That's good. He won't break it. Okay, guys, so it's the evening here, We're about to go to bed, and I'm just checking the security cameras, and I was thinking, what is that? Like, what is this right here? And I think... I think that's Ron and Hermione sleeping right by each other. <laughs> All right, we wanted to come check to see if they were really out here. Oh, look, Kevin. There they are. <laughs> oh no, they heard us. They heard us. Every day, trying to see any action between them. He keeps bugging her. He's trying to convince her slowly. So the other day, right after we turned off the camera, Ron actually bred Hermione. So we're thinking she's bred and her due date should be around the end of February. 
pretty much the same as last year. You excited you'll have fun babies to play with, Hermione? Okay guys, the potatoes have officially sprouted. Not the sweet potatoes back here, those are almost ready, but the regular potatoes. Now it's just all about covering them up as they grow and hopefully not overwatering them like I did in the spring, which rotted them all out. So it's a delicate balance here trying to grow things in Arizona. You've either got too much heat and you're trying to overwater or you get cold like this, 70, 60 degrees, and then you don't need to water as much. So I'm trying to find that good balance and hopefully come January we'll have potatoes. Well, I don't have potatoes ready yet in the garden, but we're gonna use potatoes today in tonight's dinner because it's so incredibly chilly outside and we're wearing coats and we have blankets on when we're even inside the house. We need some comfort food. Tonight we're making Salisbury steak and some of you may not have ever heard of it. I don't know where this dish actually originates from. It's probably called something like the poor man's steak, but I think it tastes amazing. So we're gonna make it tonight. We'll add some ground beef and ground pork to a bowl along with some breadcrumbs. And then we add, believe it or not, ketchup, mustard, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, if that's how you say it, along with garlic powder, onion powder, and that's it. We mix it all up and we're gonna turn it into patties. But these aren't burgers, guys. This is steak. So we're gonna cook it as such. We you gotta get it nice and seared on each side. This brings out all of the flavor. We'll cook them about three-fourths of the way through and then set them aside on a plate. Now it's time to make the gravy. So we add some butter to the pan, some flour, and this is a roux. This is gonna be kind of our glue that holds the gravy together. Then we'll add a bunch of broth, keep stirring, and as it gets hot, it thickens. Now this is the best part. Now we're gonna add the Salisbury steaks back into the pan and let it simmer in that delicious gravy. Trust me on this, guys. Meanwhile, I'll mash up the potatoes, add a little bit of sour cream, salt and pepper, milk, whatever it takes to make really good creamy mashed potatoes. And guys, when this is done, Oh my gosh, it is so comforting, so delicious. You've got the very tender Salisbury steak with the gravy and then the mashed potatoes. Oh my gosh. Try it guys, you're gonna love it. I think Ron is all tired out from breeding with Hermione. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you wanna see a video where Luna stood up to a coyote, click right here.